he gets really angry and in a moment of anger, he kills this Egyptian and he tries to hide it. And he thinks that nobody's watching. Really moral of the story is somebody yeah. always be watching, okay? You know who it is? It's one of two people, probably both, God mm -hmm. and Santa. Yeah. Somebody's gonna get you. Someone's got a list. Definitely Santa Claus. Definitely Santa. Everybody's talking all this stuff about him. Why don't they just let God live? Tell me why. He don't need permission. Makes his own decisions. That's God's prerogative. That's God's prerogative. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Fucked Up Sunday School, a remix of Ash and Michelle Do the Bible, and our newest Patreon exclusive segment. You guys are patrons, you know what this is. But we're gonna be releasing this episode to the public as well because we want y'all to really get to know Crystal since Ryan told the first episode, and now Crystal is going to be telling the second episode. If you did not listen, last week or you're new here what's up that's so fucked up is a podcast about cults murder and other generally fucked up stuff and this is fucked up sunday school where we are going through the bible yes chapter by chapter and book by book actually i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> Because Genesis and Exodus are different books, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. Real different. So we're getting to a whole new book today, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, not a new chapter. A whole new book, which drops some knowledge on you guys from what I've learned. There's 66 of, and there are seven apocryphal texts from the Catholic peeps. Did I just nail that? <laughs> yeah. Did I just fucking nail the shit out of that? Dude, look, I've been paying attention, like pop quiz from myself to myself, A+. plus. <laughs> Give yourself that gold star. <laughs> and, no, I will, all day. <laughs> um, you guys, it's really healthy. I'm not even kidding. Talk to yourself nicely. It's really good. And one of those texts is about vampires, right, Ryan? <laughs> I mean, we're not yes. there yet, but I'm excited. I'm real excited. <laughs> wow, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See, because you guys, in case you didn't know, Ryan was raised Catholic. Crystal was raised what flavor Protestant. of Christianity? If we're going to do Catholic, then we get, we'll say Protestant. Okay. And is Protestant of the sort of evangelical or fundamentalist wing? Or is it more of a regular brand? There's a rubric underneath. They're Protestant. And then right below that, there's evangelicals, sometimes fundamentalists, sometimes there's overlap yeah so but fundamentalists right. are evangelical for sure no you guys i found something out really important the other day because i'm on a little bit of a crusade right now against religious abuse uh-oh another crusade <laughs> yeah i'm on so many crusades you guys i can't stop the first one was pretty bad you do realize the irony of you using a crusade in a religious context right <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wait, that's really funny. You guys, also in Scientology, there's these things called rundowns. There's like the happiness rundown and the sunshine rundown. Crystal, you should be listening to Ash and Alex do Scientology. Yeah. It will blow your mind. The other day, me and Alex were going live and I said, can you give me a quick rundown before we do? And I was like, oh my fucking God, you have indoctrinated no, me into Scientology no, lingo. <laughs> And now I'm using biblical lingo at you guys. Jesus Christ. There I go. Look. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> okay. This is what I learned, though. While all fundamentalists may be evangelicals in asserting that Jesus Christ is Lord, not all evangelicals are fundamentalists. And I needed to figure this out. I don't know if you guys have watched Shiny Happy People yet about the Duggars and the IBLP, the Institute for Basic Life principles, which is a fundamentalist sect that the Duggars were a part of. Basically, TLC is a fucking fundamentalist Christianity propaganda machine mm -hmm. and a modern day freak show. Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed to say that I have dutifully watched some of their programs and might continue to watch a couple <laughs> of them. I, I'm, I Look, I admit that with shame. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm going to try not to, you guys. But like, listen, where I draw the line now is toddlers and tiaras because that is just watching child abuse. I watched like two seasons of that at a really low point in my life. You guys, I straight up felt dirty on the inside afterwards. I was like, Ashley, you just watched child abuse for like three seasons because I don't know if you guys ever watched that shit, but it is A, pedo central and B, they're giving toddlers Red Bull and shit to make them stay awake and then putting fake teeth on them and spray painting them like 30 year old women and then making them dance. And then there's like weird dudes in the background and you're like, I don't think your kid is in the show. Yeah. Anywho. I need a shower now. That's gross. Uh, (laughs) Ryan's like just hearing the synopsis. I feel fucking dirty. Sick, sad world. So now I recently did a binge or bust on Jesus Camp where they send these kids to this evangelical summer camp. And this was in 2006 and they were teaching them that they need to get into political roles to stop abortion. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fast forward, I don't know, 16 years later. What's gone? Uh Uh-oh, our rights. So that kind of freaked me out. So then I started digging into it more. Then I just watched Shiny Happy People, which is about how the right fundamentalist brand of Christianity, and I put that in quotes, is all about political power. And you guys, it goes all the way to the top and I'm digging in and I'm exposing the religious abuse, but I really needed to make sure that I was not attacking the wrong group. Credit the article. I don't have the man's name off the top of my head who wrote it, but this was super important for me to understand that evangelicalism and fundamentalist Christianity are definitely different things and all fundamentalists maybe evangelicals, but not if all evangelicals are fundamentalists. Right. And while there may be a lot of abuse that happens in evangelism, what I'm focusing on is fundamentalism because there's no if, ands, or buts about what's going no on if, there. No ands, or buts, or dinosaurs. No. <laughs> and somebody said, aren't you afraid of losing listeners? And I said, fundamentalist Christians are not listening to my podcast, baby. <laughs> I mean, Crystal, they probably are dinosaurs, though. <laughs> yeah, they are. The dinosaurs are people. <laughs> (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) but not in the Bible. There's no No. dinosaurs in the fundamentalist Bible. So (laughs) yes, that is true. (laughs) Right. I don't know. Maybe let's just not take all of this at face value and believe that every word of it's true. That's just that's my advice. I don't know. Do what you want, guys. But just maybe keep listening to this and see if you still feel like it all makes a lot of sense. So last week, Ryan, do you want to give a synopsis of what we talked about? Sure. Previously on the Bible, we talked about. Joseph and his journey through Egypt. And we set it up so that somebody's got to go retrieve his bones. Don't forget to tell people that he was the guy with the coat. He was the guy with the coat that you've seen the play about, that you probably <laughs> are thinking, yes, it's Joseph. And Bro, the I have not coat. seen that play. I always thought, what the fuck is that shit about? That looks lame as hell. <laughs> Joseph and the Technicolor dream coat. I had no desire to even find out what it was about. What about Jesus Christ Superstar? Is that a religious play? Yeah. yeah, it's the it's the story of Jesus. It's yeah. the New Testament, the Gospels, but set to like 70s. Yeah, it's the rock and roll cleaned up version of Jesus. So you guys get how steeped in Christianity our culture is, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess it's all Christianity. It's not just Christianity. Well, Catholicism is a brand of Christianity, right? So we're not, let's make it clear that we're not talking about Christianity as a whole as a bad thing. I'm just, we're- Well, the- Judeo-Christian tradition, I guess, is the best way to say it because not everything necessarily even comes from Christianity. There's a lot of stuff that comes from Judaism, the Jewish tradition. Like circumcision. Yes. We do. In our house, we, we now refer to Christianity as cultural appropriation. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear why. <laughs> well, because it basically takes the whole text that, you know, that Jewish people use and then adds all these other parts to it. And so it really is the Jewish religion. It's not just a religion. It's also a culture. It's an ethno religion. Right. And so Christians, they took that and then they were like, all right, but we got a lot of other stuff and now it's ours. You know, it's jazz all over again. You know, it's hip hop. It's, you know, Eminem. <laughs> Hold on. C- come on, Crystal. We can't like Eminem. Oh, yeah, we totally like Eminem. Okay, I'm like, he's fucking talented, yeah. dude. I know he's white. I don't think he's anything's good. wrong with Eminem. Okay. <laughs> Would you know that ice make you feel better, Ashley? Yeah, no, fuck that. Ding, 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 ding. You, stir- you stole that. We all know it. But everybody did turn white mm-hmm. in the Bible. Mm-hmm. 
And I don't, I think most of the people weren't white, actually, as far as to where we are now. As I understand, I believe it's the Romans who come in later and like murder Jesus, right? You yeah. guys, where, how do I know that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess it's hard to get through 35 years of living in America and not pick up like a couple things, you know? Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. I know bits here and there. Mm-hmm. I, somebody actually did explain to me that that was because of the Judeo Christian kind of influence. Overall arching influence. Yeah. And that's why everybody here gets circumcised. Like people in Europe don't get circumcised. Unless they're um, Jewish. For the most part. <laughs> like my yeah, husband. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody here, it's just immediately because they say it's for hygiene or something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. It sounds like maybe, you know, people should do it for their religious reasons and we shouldn't treat. You know what? I'm going to stop myself. <laughs> okay. You know, I feel like I'm getting into murky water. While Crystal and her family call it a cultural <laughs> appropriation, I think we do want to make it clear that we're not trying to like make fun of or put down Christianity as a religion or as a whole. It, that's not our point here at all. No, and it's not a put down. I mean, it's how Christianity stayed so strong, right? There's a reason that it's you know, Irish Catholic. It's because when Catholicism went over to Ireland, they took all the pagan cultural landmarks and brought that into Catholicism to keep them under control. It happens throughout cultures. You see it. There's a reason why Catholicism's strong in Latin America countries too. The religion takes and adapts the cultures that they're in to help grow it. All religion does it. It's why religion is so popular and stays relevant is the fact that it's pliable and it can adopt uh, societal norms of the day. People love religion. <laughs> I mean, we're kind of in the margins of kind of being like, I don't know, let's let's just... And that's what we're doing is we're not making fun of it. We're just looking at it from a very literal perspective, actually, which is funny because that's what fundamentalist Christians do is they look at the Bible and they believe that every word by word is true as it's stated. And we're looking at it that way also. And just having like a slightly different feel and perspective about, okay, if we look at this literally, like, (laughs) oh, okay. No, you guys are doing that like for realsies. That's intense. Well, the other thing too, though, we have to mention is because we're not going back and forth between Old and New Testament, we're literally going in the order that at least it's put in in the Christian Bible. It's really hard to tie what we're doing to Christianity. Like right now, really what we're talking about is Judaism, like how Judaism got set up because we're not saying this is the Christian interpretation of these things. We're just going, we're looking at the text as it is uninterpreted through the lens of, well, this is now what's happened since Jesus has come. This is how we look back on that. No, we're looking at it from, you know, the way that Jews are currently looking at this text. And with that, we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Shout out to our mutual friend, um, hilarious comedian and amazing podcaster, Dawn Brody. Her podcast Mm -hmm. is Health Mm -hmm. History I'd Like to Fuck. If you have not listened to that shit, get it in your ear immediately. It's amazing. On June 21st, which as of this time, I don't know is in the future or past, but on June 21st, Dawn is releasing an episode where she fucks the Titanic for me. (laughs) Oh, she fucks it good. So you guys better listen to that because I mean, if you thought you knew everything to know about the Titanic, you're wrong. <laughs> okay, so shout out to Dawn, but it was really funny because I was like, hey, so I just learned that Christianity was the first monotheistic religion from back in the day. And she was like, well, actually, um, it was Judaism <laughs> like 4,000 years before that. And I was like, mother fuck. And that's why we call it a cultural appropriation because <laughs> like, that's how prevalent Christianity is, is that there are a lot of people that like believe that i heard the whole story and was like so christianity started then exactly (laughs) (laughs) and uh yeah no yeah jews were there first (laughs) no it was so funny because you know i was like hey don look i know history too i felt so cool and she was like "Mm, amazing you heard it all and you got it wrong still it's actually wonderful actually it's refreshing 
it shows how complicated this stuff is. And that's why I never, even though I was interested in religion, because it's really weird, you guys, because I've never known religious people. I mean, I have like here and there, but I've always just grown up in really liberal places and didn't know people who were, you know, quoted the Bible and whatnot. And I understand that there are a lot of places in America that if you live, it's super Bible-y <laughs> and religious. And I've just never been a part of that. But I was always curious as to what was up with this book and this whole club that people were in that I was like, what's going on in there? You're Bible curious. I want to know, but I don't want to join the club. But <laughs> I want to know what they're talking about in the meetings, you know? <laughs> like Crystal said, I was like, I kind of want to go to one of the, I believe it's Southern Baptist churches where you get to sing a lot and, you know. Some right? of them, yeah. Right, Crystal? Southern Baptist or, I mean, sometimes even non-denominational. No, no. I want the choir. Yeah. I want like the whole black choir. I want that the experience. The difference will be like some, a lot of times Southern Baptists, they'll have robes. Like they'll have a uniform. No, that's what I want. I want like, I want sister act. I'm telling you, these other ones where it's not a uniform, but they'll be like, oh, everybody has a version of like a green top and like a blue bottom, but it's all different. No, that's culty. I feel like that's cultier than the robes for some reason. <laughs> mm, uh... <laughs> Because there's more coordination? I don't know. <laughs> I have to say what's so funny is that we're all wearing green shirts right now. Just a little behind the scenes No, <laughs> We're them. Oh my God. We didn't even mean to. Let's pick our parts. I'm an alto. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, so am I. <laughs> Well, you can't be. I called it first. <laughs> so this is this is a problem. No, but I think you're right. You were like, Ashley, be careful because they might get you. And I was like, no, you're right. I don't know. Singing together feels so good. You know, I feel like I would get off on the endorphins. Absolutely. Of, you would. You'd be crying. You'd be clapping. All of a sudden, I'm speaking in tongues yeah. and I'm questioning life. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I got to stay out. of Well, not just out of the South. Southern Baptist churches are everywhere, right? Are you going straight Pentecostal? You're going to have snakes and everything going big? I just want the choir. There's a famous story in my family where my great grandmother, who lived to be 101, but she had, I think, a total of nine kids. And at one point, she was always- That's too many. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, probably didn't even believe in birth control, if even if she had access to it. But she was in church and she caught the Holy Spirit. And one of the manifestations of catching the Holy Spirit is a loss of control of your body. And this happened to her, you know, according to the family while she was holding a baby. And the story goes, she threw the baby. She oh threw the God. baby up in the air oh. and the person behind her caught the baby. <laughs> like a fucking football. Does this explain like why Uncle Ted is the way Uncle Ted is or... <laughs> like, yeah. I was getting kind of nervous. The baby was caught. It was just another, you know, another lesson, you know? You just... That was your grandma? Yeah, my great-grandmother. Okay, wait, Crystal, this really... <laughs> okay, this brings me to such a good question. Is catching the Holy Ghost a different thing? It's the same thing. Than catching the Holy it's Spirit. The same thing. What about Holy Ghosting? Do you know? Is that something else? That's only what happened to me when I was dumped by a pastor. That's what that is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's... That's a, that's a literal joke that I tell on stage. That's literal. I say that joke on stage. I was like, oh, she listened to my album? Uh. I listen to part. That's okay. I'm going to be honest. I'll be honest. I was dying because I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's her joke. Yeah. Okay. Should we talk about the Bible? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do it. God. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun and holy ghosting. Yes. Catching the, Catching holy, the spirit. holy Spirit. Let's be yes. honest. <laughs> Did you guys ever catch the Holy Spirit? I mean, yeah, sure. Shut up, Crystal. Why not? Did you? Not in a I have no control of my limbs sort of way. But I was I was a part of several different church traditions from, you know, experiencing high intense emotions, crying and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. speaking tongues. Do I? Oh, yeah. Like all of that stuff. I was steeped in it. Yeah. Wowza. Interpreting dreams. Do you think today that you were just manipulated? into a really high state of emotion by the situation around you and the coercive person leading your jamboree? I would say there's two answers to that. I would say yes and no, because I felt like for a long period of time, a lot of the things that I was receiving emotionally and psychologically were actually helping to strengthen my life 
as I was living it out in the real world, whether it be hard situations at work, hard situations with family, you know, there were hard things that were going on for me that I felt like the experience of being at church and experiencing, you know, what felt like a close connection to God actually made me feel better about those tough situations. And so for most of my religious life, it was constantly something that I was choosing even so like my parents got divorced when I was five and my mom stopped going to church and she had me on the days that church happened. And so even at that point in my life, it had to be my decision. Like I had to ask my grandmother to take me to church. I had to ask my aunt, you know, if I could sleep over so I could go to church. So many parts of my life, it was really, even at a young age, my decision to enter into it and to stay in it because I felt like there was something real that I was experiencing at the time. And so I don't want to discredit myself, you know, I made those decisions, right? So I don't want to discredit myself or who I was at the time and say, no, that was all not real. You were wrong. I just think there are more ways that I believe are possible for me to live my life and still be happy and still experience happiness than the way that I was doing it before. So yes and no. Yeah. Interesting. I love that perspective. What made you, and is it kind of just what you said that you decided to leave because you decided that there were other ways to find fulfillment and happiness in life? Actually, what prompted it was Ferguson. So when we started to see in the news, not just videos that people would send to each other, but started to see in the news, the videos of uh, Black people being killed by the police and having zero repercussions. What happened in my church was what happened in a lot of churches, which is that the church had to figure out how they were going to respond to a national issue, which churches don't always like to get involved in that, you know, TLC aside, you know, they like to kind of stay out of that and have you deal, you know, just with like the individual life situations that you're going through rather than speaking on political matters, right? And so Mm -hmm. in my opinion, as a Black person, I felt like if this is God and God is supposed to be doing something and standing up for justice and we are his hands and feet in, in order to stand up for justice, then we actually have to take a stand or against these things that are happening in our country. And my church chose not not to really take a stand publicly and definitely not on the pulpit and very rarely in Bible studies. And so what happened with me was I just started to pull away because I realized all of a sudden this is not the place where I can be holistically cared for. And as that happened, I started to just open my mind up to different ways of living. And I think had, you know, kind of the racial reckoning that happened in several waves in this country between 2014 to now. Now, if they had not happened, I probably would still be in church, I'm guessing, you know, just very still religious. And it's not my life anymore. And I'm I'm happy that it's not. But that is what prompted it. Interesting. Yeah. So kind of just losing faith because you felt unsupported by your Mm -hmm. community and by your savior. (laughs) You're like, hey, man, where you at? Yeah. Feeling like you're leaving me hanging here. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what prompted you to not go to seminary? And kind of stop doing what you were doing. And we'll hear my story right after the break. So my folks also got divorced and I was seven at the time. My mom got their marriage annulled. And at the time that really upset my dad because an annulment in the Catholic church or in most Christian churches is not just, hey, divorce, but it's like the marriage never happened. Right. It wipes it clean. My dad's like, no, well, that's not true. I was married for 15 years. I have two kids out of it. That's just not right. And so I started, you know, having conversations with my dad and then my stepmom's family got introduced to me and they were a super big influence on me. And I saw that there's, you know, Catholicism was something I was clinging to because much like Crystal, like when you're in a situation that's kind of rough, one of the things that religion gives you is a solid place and a community, really. Mm -hmm. You see the same people on Sunday, you know, you, you have some sort of guidance, you know, that's that's good, especially if you're in a you know time of questioning and rearranging vulnerability. And vulnerability, <laughs> absolutely. So you know when I started stepping out and seeing the world in a different way, and just kind of learning a little bit more about the world, you know, once I started getting into high school and stuff like that, and seeing how other people lived, I had you know friends of other 
denominations and faith. I, you know, there was a lot of things that were, uh, that are good about religion, but the, the bubble that I was living in just kind of imploded. I wasn't going to a Catholic school anymore. You know, I was mm-hmm. in public school and that changed a you lot of things. You were being indoctrinated every single day. <laughs> well, yeah, you go every day, you know, you have, you go to mass, you do have religion class, you, you know, I mean, we didn't do like you were asking earlier about nun math or, you know, like <laughs> religious math, like there's three nuns plus two nuns equal five nuns. I, you know, yeah. We didn't do any of that. Like there was none of that. <laughs> But like it was something that for a long time in my life gave me guidance, a sense of purpose, a moral code, you know, stuff that is good. There are yeah. good pieces to religion, but I also think I didn't realize how religion could be used and how it is used to do things that aren't as good and not understanding the wider scope of the world and just kind of seeing your bubble, you know, once you start to get outside of it, you go places, you leave the country for a bit, you know, things change, oh, your perspective yeah. changes and- you know, the way you feel about things change. So I think it was just an evolution of growing. And I didn't need that. I hate to say it, but like crutch anymore. Yeah. I kind of grew out of it. And I do believe in a higher power. I don't know if I believe in the God of the Bible, but I do believe in a higher power. Amesies. We're having fun with the written word here. That's the goal is just to have fun with the written word. But what turned me away was just the matter of more info, more input from the outside world. It wasn't like a one thing. It was kind of like an evolution of things. And I just want to say that to anybody who can, I highly recommend traveling. It definitely opens up your mind. And going forward, the tone of the episodes won't be so serious and they will be more story focused. And as you'll see, we're going to get to our story in a minute. But I do think that it's kind of important to have an understanding of exactly what your guy's background is. And so that we all have an understanding as well as the listeners that I don't know, I just think it's important to have some background as to where you guys are both coming from and how you came to the way that you think today. Let's get biblical. Let's do it. Let's fucking go. Um, okay, so we have Joseph. Joseph has a whole era of being Joseph. And there are a series of pharaohs that remember this amazing Joseph person. And they were like, yep, there's that one guy that we used to know. He was a Hebrew and he interpreted dreams and he had all this like fancy wisdom about the famine and how to handle it. And so they kind of remember that. That's kind of in the psyche of the pharaohs for several hundreds of years before before we even get to where we're at with Moses and Exodus, okay? Mm -hmm. Cut to, you know, it's been 300 years and all of a sudden there's a pharaoh who's like, Joe, who the fuck is that? Right, because he's long gone. Yeah, he's long gone. And he's like, why do I need to care about this, Joseph? I know they told me about it in pharaoh school, but who is he, you know? I learned about it in history class, but it didn't feel relevant. It didn't feel, you know, pertinent to my life today. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) He's like Mariah. Mariah Carey and, you know, Joseph is J-Lo. He's like, I don't know her. (laughs) I literally don't even know her. Uh (laughs) I'm better than that. (laughs) So he looks out at the Israelites and he sees that they're prospering. And one of the things that I I guess I want to point out about like the end of Genesis, Joseph's life is the fact that Joseph's life is kind of used as this allegory for how God will help you and help you rise up and be established even in tough situations. Right. It's like, look at this guy. He went through the ringer, man, and he ended up at the top. Yeah. But now this is what's about to happen is like the worst possible situation, but not just for one person, but for like all of the Israelites that are in Egypt, because the especially the babies, because babies are the worst. (laughs) Spoiler. And um... (laughs) (laughs) and so he's like looking at like how they're prospering and how they're growing, even though they're like not really that high up in society. And he's like, "Mm, I don't really like this. Let's enslave them. Let's make them, you know, under us. Let's make them do all this crazy stuff for us and that's not enough so then they're like all right wait because the israelites were doing well yeah the pharaoh was pissed off he was like they're doing well they're flourishing Hold they're on. growing in numbers they're growing you know in space that they're taking over in egypt stop it mm-hmm. stop hold on <laughs> Are you telling me that this pharaoh was the OG Hitler? Yes. <laughs> Oh my God, did you ever make that connection? Yes. 
OK, OK. <laughs> but it's a You're good like, one. Yeah, it's a good one bitch. to point out. <laughs> no, it's not. It may not be super obvious because the thing is, is that we are reading what I will say at this point, a lot of this text, while some people may look at the miracles that happen, maybe say that is a metaphor. I'm not going to say what you should or should not believe, but there are some parts of this text that are actually factual and is backed up by several historical texts, not just the Bible. Okay, you better let me know which parts those are. You're going to, right? Because I need to know. Yeah, well, one of them being Pharaoh having all of the Israelites being slaves. Like, that is oh, undisputed. Oh, that's real. Mm-hmm. Undisputed. Do you know if they had any part in building the pyramids? Uh, yeah. Because they say that <laughs> <Yeah>. slaves... <laughs> Built the pyramids. Uh, no, are, are you are you laughing at me because no, no. it's a well known fact? Okay. <laughs> it is still debated amongst historians which pharaoh it is. Mm-hmm. They it's widely believed it's Ram uh, Ramus. Rams, he's Ramses. Yeah. Ramses. Sorry. Ramses. Yeah. Ramses. He's the, he's known as the great builder pharaoh. He was a real dude. He was mm-hmm. a real dude. He uh-huh. and he enslaved a lot of people. Not just okay. Not just the Hebrews. Not just the Israelites. So oh okay. They line it up, and the fact this one of the cities they mention is Ramses uh, that in the story later on. So a lot of historians believe that that's the pharaoh, that's the timeline. There's some that believe it's a different pharaoh. There's debate, but for the most some, part, but a lot of people think that he was the dude who was had the, the slaves build the pyramids. Yeah, because he's the one that's considered the great builder, and the way that time lines up, it would make sense that under his reign, those could have been built the way they were built. Okay. Yeah, it's just really interesting because that's why Hitler said that, you know, the Nazis had to be exterminated is because there was too many the Jews, of them yeah, and they yeah. were prospering and same exact reasoning. And I and I will say, whereas in Hitler's case, he said that there's a lot of them and actually like the the Jews that existed in I think Germany at the time, it was like below like point one percent. It wasn't a lot. <laughs> Not to Pharaoh's credit, but I will say what they say is there there were a lot of Jews. There there were a lot in Pharaoh's time. Not not to, not that it was right. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're not saying that at all. But no. compared to like well in Hitler's case, like there there were a lot. There were and they were growing because God was like, Yeah, make babies. You guys are my pop people. Them out, you know? Yeah. Go forth, be prosperous. <laughs> so Hitler was kind of trying to be like, no, you guys, it's back like Egypt days. You don't even get it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a baby fraction of that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Hitler, you fucking wily bastard. He was, was like, yo, Egypt wasn't hard enough. We're not just going to enslave them. We're going to, you know, <laughs> exterminate them. Because, you know, slaving shit's not strong. Oh, enough. but Pharaoh's uh. getting there. Oh, yeah. After this commercial break, Pharaoh goes even darker. <laughs> Pharaoh's like, okay, even though we are enslaving them, even though we're like putting them under our thumb, they're still fucking prospering. They're still still fucking, okay? They're they're still they're still having sex and pumping out babies and we we need to like curb this a little bit and so he sends out this edict to kill the firstborn of all the babies of the jews the see fi- that doesn't make sense so you'd think he would kill the, and babies. the firstborn boy yeah the firstborn boy can be probably an adult man right Right, which means an extra slave for him. I don't get it. It's stupid. He's killing off a bunch of his workforce. Exactly. That's exactly. a ridiculous. It's this small he is dick not a good businessman. It it's very small dick energy. <laughs> get it together, dude. Small or uncircumcised God. dick energy. And let's go. <laughs> oh, right, because yeah. right, right, not a Jew. Right, not a Jew. <laughs> but in America, everybody gets the snip. Well, the dudes, for the most part. Um. So my favorite part about this is, obviously, I hate infanticide, you know, but... What? There is, yeah, because he's killing the babies. <laughs> she says, what? You hate that? <laughs> So what happens is there's a lot of midwives and not just, you know, Jewish midwives. There are Egyptian midwives. And- Hold the phone. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Mm-hmm. So he killed all the firstborns. He's that's trying to. That's the infanticide? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's not babies. I thought they killed all the babies. They're like killing a all bunch the of... firstborn boys. Yeah, all the males. Mm-hmm. 
All they the boys. Were putting... Yeah, all the boys. If an Israelite has a male child, kill it immediately. And so okay. this is the edict to the midwives who are actually delivering the babies. <sighs> You Go guys, ahead. I'm Go not going to lie. Go I've heard the Passover story probably six times now because of se- different auditions and uh-huh. whatnot. I thought they killed all the fucking babies. No, just the boys. No, just the I men. I thought infant, infant mm-hmm. aside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's like you kill all the any, infants. That's any infant, though. Infant side is like homicide or murder. So mm-hmm. any familiar side. Yeah. Okay, so they're not killing a bunch of babies. They're killing like boys and men of various ages. No, they're killing babies. They're killing babies. Yes. <laughs> As new baby Israeli males are born, they're uh-huh. killing them. As they're born. Mm-hmm. Oh, as they're born. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he's like, he tells the midwives, he's like, if you uh-huh. see a boy, as soon as you pull it out, kill it. First, they killed a bunch of boys and men, and now they're continuing the infanticide by killing every new baby boy who gets born. Well, he just says, yes. kill as soon as you see a baby boy, kill it. Uh huh. That's the okay. edict. Kill any male that is born. Any new okay. male that is born. That's the edict. Okay, so not the firstborn, just I mean, any new yeah, born. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's make that. I, I think that's a good thing to make clear for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Firstborn like, comes later. I thought he was out. He, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now. We're killing babies. Just, we're killing I mean, babies me. left and right. But like <laughs> yeah. the royal we. Yeah. Crystal, Ryan, and Ashley <laughs> are just, we're out there in the world just. <laughs> Wow, that got Merkin dark. babies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Everybody's like, damn, you guys. Um, wow. So sorry. Um, these are real people. <laughs> and it's great because the midwives, the Egyptian midwives, yeah. they don't want to do it. No. And so That's mean. they're like, listen, Pharaoh, we tried to kill the babies right away, but the Jewish women, they pop them out so fast. I don't know what it is about them. They just they just pop out babies, you know? Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, before we can even get there. They're fertile as fuck. Dude. They're fucking like rabbits. <laughs> they they're like <laughs> I don't know how they go into labor. They like pop. They just slide out. I don't know. We don't even get there in time. We couldn't even get there to kill them. I'm so sorry. And so that's their whole reasoning. (laughs) But what's cool is that God's like, I like that shit. And he actually shows favor on these Egyptian midwives. He's like, I like I like you lying to protect my people. I like it. (laughs) I'm into it. Uh Like generally don't lie except for when it's good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and the lord said it was good mm-hmm. and so it was you guys yep. except it wasn't except though, it right wasn't. because it wasn't a bunch cool of, in the school mm-hmm. they did kill a bunch of babies they now did. is that historically accurate Proven? i mean that's what they say that's what they say happened really yeah Ryan. yeah i mean for the yeah? most no. part no no. It's, well, I mean, so the hard thing about the Exodus story is that it's it's debated about when, where, and the timeline. Uh, they generally feel like that could have absolutely been a thing. Some of the other parts of the story don't, doesn't really make sense and doesn't line up, but the enslavement of the Israelites, it can, depending on the timeline, and the killing of young babies isn't, like, unique through history <sighs> at all. It's not. Oh, Okay. It happens in the New Testament. We have a repeat. So I will say, when you get to the whole Jesus story, that is part of the beginning of the Jesus story because that same thing happens. Okay. You guys are blowing my goddamn mind right now. (laughs) So some of the Bible is true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I knew Jesus was a real dude. I knew that much. But like the burning bush is questionable. Was Moses real? Yes. They have found the Ark of the Covenant. They have found a lot of these things that prove that these things happen. What the fuck is the Ark of the Covenant? We'll get to it. Okay. Hold on. And so they think that definitely Israelites were enslaved by Pharaoh and that maybe the infanticide did happen because all throughout time it's been proven that people just like love killing babies it's still true i looked on the fucking colorado true crime news website one day and it was literally just uh, these parents killed their kids and then these ones killed their babies and it was just non-stop everybody killing babies and kids i was like what the fuck man unfortunately it's the true and tested way of controlling an unwanted population throughout history ah just genocide the younger ones then they can't repopulate okay that makes sense Wow, history's fucked. Yeah. The, the true and the made up. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, wow, you guys are blowing my mind. Okay, so this is like a real maybe. Yeah, whether it's historically true or not, this is what it says in Exodus. And so the midwives, they are favored by God because they're able to save quite a bit of the males of the Israelites, uh, their babies. But Pharaoh makes a new rule. He's like, all right, put, put them all in the river. Just put all the male babies in the river to die. And Moses' mom has a boy and she's able to keep him quiet for three months. I don't know how. I don't know what was in the sauce, but she's like, all right, I can hide him for three months. So she's able to hide him. Then it's just too much. You know, he's crying. I don't know. She can't hide him anymore. I'm guessing this kid doesn't have a name or at least not a name that we know beforehand because he's not yet called Moses yet. But she comes up with this plan to put him in. Spoilies. Yeah, I it's know, Moses. right? <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right back with Moses' mom's plan right after the break. So she puts him in this basket and puts him in the river. I don't know what is in her mind at this point. I don't know if she expects what happens next to happen, but she's just like, I'm clearly not going to kill my kid. And I clearly can't hold on to my kid any longer. Let me put him in this basket and put him in a river. Dude, is there not crocodiles or alligators in this I don't, river? You know, I don't know much about the ecology of the Nile. So I don't know. Uh, Well, <laughs> maybe somebody should have done some deeper research. <laughs> All right, to help Crystal out. Yes, if it's historically accurate, yeah, there are things in the water that could eat a baby. But the way the Bible does its geography, there's a, a town like three hours down the river that way. <laughs> They're supposed to arrive at? Maybe. Possibly, maybe. Okay, I just feel like that's an absolute death sentence, which also the Pharaoh thought. But this kid's going to die of like dehydration or sunburn or something first. Look, a Hail Mary is a Hail Mary baby. <laughs> that's fucked up, dude. The alternative though, right, is you're thrown into the river to just die. So well, I would rather, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, this is going to sound intense. I'd rather just like kill the baby. Save it from some misery. Just mercy exactly. killing it. Exactly. Put it out of its misery. Just stab that bitch. I'm sorry, you guys. Listen, I'm not a mom. It just does not affect. They're like, Jesus, I cannot listen to this show anymore. <laughs> this girl just said she was going to stab babies. Listen, you guys, I'm not going to. I'm just saying if that were, you know, my fucking Sophie's choice back in the day. I don't think I would go with the like Hail Mary throw the baby in the fucking river for the alligators and sun exposure route. I mean, you know, there can be miracles though, if you believe. There can uh. be miracles. <laughs> the when hope is, you fr- is believe, frail. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the hope is frail. It's hard. It's hard to, to kill, kill, you know. <laughs> Wait, shut up. Is that the fucking is that the lyrics? <laughs> that is the lyrics. Yeah. I thought it was, it's hard to care. Though hope is frail, it's hard to kill. Mm-hmm. You guys, that is from a, a Disney movie called The Prince of Egypt. Well, technically it's not Disney, but yes. <laughs> okay. Well, it makes this whole Passover story adorable. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not going to lie, that song jams. It's, yeah, it's a bop. I love that song. I had no idea <laughs> until very recently that it was about the death of a bunch of babies and and the survival of one i mean what is happening survival of the fittest <laughs> survival of the fittest played by <laughs> christian bale yes he did play moses in a 2013 movie <laughs> So FYI. Okay, continue, Crystal. Okay. It's the same problem no with problem. Ryan. You're going to get used to it. I have a lot of questions and I have a lot of things to say. Absolutely. I'm into it. All right. So she sends unnamed baby in a basket in the river and sends unnamed baby's older sister to watch after it. So the sister is watching the baby to just look over it and make sure that nothing happens to it. And as the sister is watching, she sees that the basket has sidled up to the queen. Whose sister is this? Moses' sister? Well, yes, Moses, since we're, yes, we now, we're spoiling it, but yes. Yes. Oh, spoiler. <laughs> okay, it's Moses. But yes. Okay, spoiler, you guys. It's Christian Bale as a baby. It's Christian Bale's sister, <laughs> Layla Bale, whoever, you know, <laughs> I don't know what her name is. <laughs> And so the, you know, the queen, she sees this baby in the river. She like, and then the sister clocks it. She's like, I think she likes the baby. I think she's into it. I'm feeling a vibe. And then the sister's the first ever Amazon cart. She's like, hey, if you like this baby. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you'll also like a nanny to look after it. <laughs> it's like the first bundle in history. <laughs> Frequently bought together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jewish babies and their slave caretakers. <laughs> you might like this. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what, Amazon? They did. They did. They did like it. And Jeff Bezos was born. And it totally changed the <laughs> algorithm forever. Uh. <laughs> It was the original <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> Those sandals pop ups are really annoying. So, <laughs> and so the cool oh, thing God. is that Moses' mom gets to be his nanny and like gets to still like be a part of his life and raise it because that's who obviously the sister suggests. Hold on, his mom was his sister. His mom, his mom gets to be his nanny because the sister's like, "Hey, do you want it to the queen? Hey, I see you like that baby. Do you also want a nanny to go with it?" <laughs> Oh, the sister yeah, was the original the si- Amazon. The sister was the original oh, Amazon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Yeah. I love it. That's great. <laughs> Moses gets to grow up in Pharaoh's house in learning all of the things that he would learn if you were, you know, of the royalty. And he kind of grows up separate, not really living the life that the other Israelites are having to live in Egypt. Right. He's not slaving away. Yes, he's not slaving away. And and the Prince of Egypt takes a lot of liberties about this part of his life. It's kind of cool the way they reimagine it, but we really don't know. Is it? Wait, are we saying the Prince of Egypt is a cool movie? I liked it. Did you not like it? <laughs> I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Did you see it as a kid or as an adult? I was an adult. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, as an adult, said I don't want to watch a biblical movie about the killing of children. But that was just my decision. Yeah, you don't have to watch it. So that's like a gloss over moment. It's more like a biopic of Moses. I say half of the movie, well, maybe at least a third of the movie, is Moses' life as a teenager growing up in the palace. The real Moses. This is real shit. No. This is in the movie. This is in the cartoon version. The historical version, we don't know it like really much about this part of Moses' life. We don't. Okay. Wait, historically though, do we know that he actually got picked out of a basket in a river? I mean, that's what this text says. Okay. You guys have me questioning everything all of a sudden. I don't know what the fuck is up or down. I mean, it is fascinating because there are texts that overlap that do talk about the same periods in time that do talk about the same wars and people groups and what was going on at the time. And then there are some parts of the text that don't really overlap with any other. Your tribe really only cares about what's going on with your tribe. So all of your texts that you're writing down is really what happened to you. But sometimes you blend with another group of people. So like sometimes you may have Egyptian historical references that also talk about the Jewish one because they had overlap or, you know, there's these people called the Hittites that had overlap. And so they're going to have historical references to what the Jewish texts also have. So that makes sense. <sighs> you guys, I've been doing this Bible show for like, I don't know, six months. And I didn't, I thought it was all made up, like all of it. Genesis is pretty fucking made up though, right? Yeah. I would say it's very allegorical. Okay. But the further you go into the Torah, the more ways you have to verify what actually happened. Wow. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. I'm it's fascinating. I'm being schooled for real right now. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm in it. I'm loving it. Okay. So we don't know much about what happens in Moses' teenage years. All we know is that at some point, Moses kind of comes to and is like, hey, I'm an Israelite, but I don't really be living like that. Let me go see what's good in the hood. (laughs) (laughs) And he goes to the hood and he sees, oh, it's not good. It's actually very bad. (laughs) It is not all good in the hood. I'm here to report. This is my interpretation. I think he feels impotent. He doesn't feel powerful because he's like, oh, I can't do anything about how they're suffering, right? They're really our slaves. So he can't get hard at all right now. (laughs) (laughs) Circumcised or uncircumcised, it is flaccid. (laughs) He's got no Viagra to help him either. He's just sitting there like... (laughs) These are rough days. Yeah, it's not even like... Like big picture, he kind of is looking in smaller picture. He's like, even among themselves, they're 
kind of fighting and he sees, you know, fighting among Israelites and he sees, you know, there's like these um, people that are being hurt by Egyptians, you know, because they're really being pushed under their thumb. So he gets really angry and in a moment of anger, he kills this Egyptian and he tries to hide it and he thinks that nobody's watching. Really moral of the story is somebody yeah. always be watching, okay? Well, you know who it is? It's one of two people, probably both, God mm-hmm. and Santa. Yeah. Somebody's going to get you. Someone's got a list. Definitely Santa Claus. Definitely Santa. Yeah. What kind of Egyptian did he kill? A royal one or just a peasant one? It's somebody who's at least feels in charge enough to like hurt uh, Israelite. Okay. And he was like, fuck that. Mm -hmm. And he kills him. Okay. And he tries to hide it and he thinks nobody saw it. Right. Right. Somebody did though. Uh Uh-oh. Then later he sees Israelites fighting and he tries to mediate. He's like, look at me. I'm solving problems. Okay. Is he running for mayor? Exactly. And so that's what they say to him. They're like, you think you're running for mayor? We know about that Egyptian you killed. They saw it. They're like, are you going to kill them? Like you you kill the Egyptian and try to hide it? What? Aren't they stoked that he killed an Egyptian? Not at all. Why? Because they're like, who are you? Who the fuck are you? Where you've been in your palace and you want to come up here and get in, in our business? Kind of like Egyptian savior type exactly, of bullshit? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. I got it. Again, this is blue collar, white collar. We don't have nothing to do with each other. You're management. Yeah. What are you out here? You are a traitor. Fucking... <laughs> I'm with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you work for the man. We're not trying to fuck with you. We saw what you did. Exactly. Last summer. Now we're all going to don raincoats and stalk (laughs) you with a hook. (laughs) He's like, the call is coming from inside the pyramid. And... Moses, he flees his life. He, he flees like all of the opulence that he was living. He just flees the whole situation. He's like, I don't want to deal with it. I'm leaving. Yeah. Which I, I guess I get it. I get, I get that. You know, a bunch of people are mad at you for murdering somebody. I might get out of Dodge too. Which where does that come from? Get Anyways, out of Dodge? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Like, where is Dodge? I don't know. And why do you have to get out of there all the time? Where is it? It's hell. That's what it is. It's Earth. Welcome. We're here. <laughs> and you can't leave. There's no way out. It's an <laughs> HR meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the meeting to prepare for the HR meeting. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. We'll be back after a quick HR meeting and the commercial break. <laughs> He runs away to this place called Midian, okay? And I don't know what it is about in Judaism, but people love finding a wife at a well, okay? And that's that's where the wives hang. Listen, (laughs) that's where they be at, okay? If I want to find me a husband, I need to go hang out by a well. Yes, that's what you have to do. Why didn't I know this in my 20s? I know. I was at the bars. They were gatekeeping wells. (laughs) Bullshit. Well, we're the bars, though, Ashley. Like, that's... <laughs> There's a reason they call them watering holes. Oh, my God. No, that makes sense. <laughs> like, what's up? It's, it was the original water cooler. Yeah, yes, literally. <laughs> So he runs away, finds a wife at a well. He has this whole new life. He's now a shepherd because all the skills he learned in the pyramids, those skills are not transferable to the desert where he's at. Okay. So he's got to learn how to shepherd and he's he's, he's shepherding now. Flock? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of lamb? Of, yeah. Okay. You know, he's got a very normal, you know, I guess now he's blue collar, right? And... All of a sudden, in the middle of shepherding, there is this bush that is on fire and is not burning up. It's like just consistently on fire. And what the hell? And it's not spreading. It's not spreading. It's not a wildfire. It's, It's localized. It's contained. Okay. Okay. So he's not worried. Yeah. I mean, or is he? Yeah. I think maybe like freaked out. Yeah. It's a little bit. You're glad that it's not spreading, but you're also like, why is this happening? Exactly. And yeah. in the midst of those questions, God starts speaking to him. Through the bush. Through the bush. And he Obviously. starts telling him all of these things that he has heard from his people. He's heard the cries of the Israelites. He's heard and seen the pain and anguish that they've gone through. And he is going to rescue them. And he's going to do it through Moses. And Moses mm-hmm. is like, what? 
And Moses goes, but why the hell would anybody believe me? I know I saw this burning bush, but like, unless this is gonna be you a hard in, sell, buddy. Unless, right, <laughs> exactly. So how do I know they'll actually be with me? How do I know that you will not abandon me? How do I know that I'm not crazy right now? So he gives him two signs, which I think are kind of cool. What if he was like, give me a sign, God, and God is like, I'm an Aquarius. And <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like mm, i'm gonna need more than that deep dark secrets come on so he gives him two signs one he's like all right put your hand in your cloak pull it out it's got leprosy on it it's got all these boils on it like magically out of nowhere i wouldn't like that sign right like, could we keep these signs a little bit less about me getting diseased right i'm not that's not a great i don't love that sign What's next? What do you got next? Yeah. The other one is he's like, all right, take your staff, put it down. And he turns it into a snake, right? Mm. And I guess these and the burning bush and all the words coming from the said bush are enough. And Moses is like, all right, I guess guess we're going to go. Guess let's do this. I have a pop quiz for Ashley. Why were snakes invented? Because God got mad at lizards, right? Because, yeah, God got mad at lizards for tempting, yeah, for being part of the temptation, yeah. For being part of the temptation. They, he took away their legs and made them slither on the ground. Yeah, um, you're right. You what, they were it. tempting Eve, the lizards? Yeah. How? To do what? To take a bite of the apple. Original sin. Oh, the lizards were like the snake in the jungle book. They're like... Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> What a okay, queer-coded so... snake that was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, I dig his song, though. I'm not going to lie. Good. It's pretty catchy. <laughs> Man cub. Okay. <laughs> You're really right. There are some tones there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, snakes are God being mad at lizards. Ah, nailed it. Who's been paying attention? Mostly. <laughs> You know, gold star and a pizza party at this point. You earned it. Yes. <laughs> One more level and there's ice cream, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. So yeah, Moses is like, all right, let's go. Let's do this. Um, And so Moses goes to Pharaoh and this is something that's interesting. I actually forgot this. And I think people don't always realize when they think about this story, but when Moses first asks for the Jews to have something at all, it's, he doesn't ask for them all to be freed. He literally just asks Pharaoh like, Hey, would you mind if we spend like three days in the desert, just like, you know, worshiping our God. He basically asks if they could go to Coachella, you know, like he's like, (laughs) (laughs) they just want a break. They're working really hard. You just need a long weekend. Like he's like, we just, (laughs) Give us a Labor Day weekend, you know? I get it. Like, you don't want to go in too hard too quick. That's not the art of negotiation. (laughs) You guys, come on, get with it. (laughs) <laughs> but but Pharaoh is not even having that. He's like, no Coachella for you. Uh, in fact, because I'm so pissed off at this request, I'm going to take the straw that you use to make the bricks for my shit. I'm going to make it harder for you to do your job. Mm-hmm. So he's, a, he's pissed. And now the Israelites, they're pissed at Moses again. <laughs> they're like, what did you do, dog? Because now they can't do their work. They can't do it as easily. It is much easier for them to make the bricks with the straw. And the the Pharaoh says, make them make the same amount of bricks as before. Don't even decrease the amount of bricks that they had to make. They just get no straw. Is that the straw straw that broke the camel's back? It's, yep, the lack of straw. Yeah. (laughs) Probably. Okay. Uh So they're pissed at Moses. Moses is like, why? You have me just out here. And God's like, no, I promise you I'm going to be with you. And, you know, and Moses is like, all right, I'm going to tell them that you have all these promises for them. Moses goes to the Israelites and tells them these are all the promises that God has. And they do not believe him. They're like, you're... We don't believe you. You're like a virgin who can't drive. Why should we trust? (laughs) Right. They're like, listen, Cher. Okay. (laughs) You used to work for the man. We also, we remember you. Like, don't get twisted. We've never been into you. Why do you keep coming back? Like, we don't like you. We keep telling you that. Stop trying to make fetch happen. (laughs) He doesn't even go here. Right. It's... 
Exactly. This is like your OG <laughs> fucking mean girls. It's mean boys. And obviously, you know, Moses is insecure about this. And so he actually goes to God and he's like, look, I have faltering lips. That's the term he uses. But it's like, he hasn't been talking a bunch. What does that mean? It could mean that he has a stutter or it could just mean like he has a hard time thinking of the next word. We don't know exactly what it means, but as somebody who has- Faltering lips. Yeah. Right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I know. I hate when my lips falter. You Ugh. know, <laughs> I hate when my lips don't lie. Um, <laughs> sometimes you need your lips and your hips to lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> That's the to. best part of the song is that it's just somebody just yelling her name. Yeah. Anyway, so Moses goes to God and he's like, Ashley Richards. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to yell my name <laughs> in the middle of something. <laughs> DJ Khaled. Uh, <laughs> DJ Khaled. So he was there with Moses. He was. Yeah, that Aaron was the first DJ Khaled ever. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> before there was DJ Khaled, there was Aaron. And God actually is like, okay, Aaron, your brother can speak for you. That's fine. He'll do it. He'll be the mouthpiece. And, you know, he'll do the words and you will do the power stuff. So that is where they're at right before a major showdown goes down between God and Pharaoh. Oh, shit. It's like Manny versus Pacquiao. God <laughs> versus Pharaoh. Yeah. Are those boxers from like two decades ago? You nailed it. Yeah. It's also like Battle of the Bands, you know? It's Leonard Skinner versus Led Zeppelin. It's Bloods versus Crips. It's, it's Cardi versus Scarface. It's Biggie versus Tupac. Biggie versus Tupac works. That one works. <laughs> so you guys tune in, well, sadly for you, next month for Biggie versus Tupac, the big showdown. <laughs> They're alive, you guys. They live on an island with Aaliyah. Um, rest in peace, y'all. Rest in peace. Well, that is fucked up Sunday school for today. If you went to church first and then listened to that or <laughs> vice versa, <laughs> you have a special place in my heart. I fucking no, love Pastor. You. Crystal said. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard something interesting today. I have a question. <laughs> I have some questions. God was just making him hard? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Ashley said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my like bad. going back in my mind over all of my counselable uh, <laughs> <laughs> phrases of the day, but that one wasn't me. Oh, yeah. He was making them rock hard for <laughs> rock and roll. For the better glory of God. <laughs> I did say we were all killing babies. I did say that. You, you did say, yeah. Maybe it's a good time to make a statement that all views expressed on TSFU, the podcast, are not that of um, professionals or people who are necessarily superly mentally stable. So, you know, just take it all with a grain of salt. No babies, animals, or other people were harmed in the making of this episode. Yeah, no. no. I, I have just, in my brain, has just replaced... Uh, the words to everybody was kung fu fighting to everybody was killing babies and it's not right <laughs> <laughs> that's our after song na, 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 na. <laughs> everyone was killing babies <laughs> fast as lightning <laughs> boy god was smiting <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Um, wow, we better get out of here. Yeah, like, we, guys, we might it. get smited. They're like, this, this is getting out of control. You guys are all going straight to hell. You know what? It sounds like fun. I heard that there's um, homos, cutters, Muslims, people who wear yoga pants, masturbators, idolaters. I was like, I'm fucking there, bro. You know? Front row seat, huh? It sounds like a good time. I don't want to go to heaven. What's that? Like pie? I get sick of pie. Okay. I love pie, though. Like a warm apple pie. That's us for today, you guys. I don't think anybody or anyone in the Bible, I don't think it's pie is mentioned. No. And cake is mentioned. They barely talk about the devil. Like, what the fuck is that? 
That's crazy. Anyways, we'll get to that later. So you guys, in the meantime, don't do anything that Christ wouldn't do. Ask yourself, what would Ashley, Crystal, and or Ryan do? That's Ooh. a bracelet that we should make um, that people can wear all the time just to remember so do how we to do live like, lives properly. Do we do ACR or ARC? Ooh. Oh, well, there. I, I, I mean, ARC is... Yeah, that's K. Because my name is spelled with a K. You guys... Oh, AKR. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hop on our ARC. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Because we'll take you on a cruise to knowledge, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Oh, we can't embed it in that. That's it. Bye. 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 Everybody's talking all this stuff about him. Why don't they just let God live? Tell me why. He don't need permission. Makes his own decisions. That's God's pre-